Hey wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. And today I'm going to show you how to create a cartoon version of yourself in a flower field. And I personally will be working in Procreate where you can follow along with your favorite software and I will give you tips for that along the way. So grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Now I'm going to try something new today to keep the video hopefully a little bit shorter. I'm going to give ahead of time all the tips for the brushes and the canvas size and all of those. So if you don't feel like you need these tips, just skip ahead to the next chapter in the video, which is going to be the sketch. Otherwise, we're going to start by just looking at the canvas setup and then I'm going to give you some brush options if you're working in Procreate and some brush options if you're working in a different software. So my canvas here that I'm working with, obviously this is a piece that you can customize, it's a cartoon yourself, but just for reference, what I'm using here is a canvas that is 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. And the color profile is sRGB IEC 61966-2.1. So it's a pretty standard one if you look at the color profile here, it's the one that has the most numbers and letters. And that's one that works really well for Procreate in general. So. That's what I'm going for, for this demo at least. And in terms of brushes here in this video, we're mostly going to use three main brushes that you can find uh, versions of at least in most software. So one brush is just going to be a basic round brush. So just the most basic brush you have in your software. So if you're working in Procreate, that brush could be from the airbrushing pack that comes with the app, the hard brush, if you're working in a different software, again, just the most basic circle brush you have in your software that doesn't have texture or feathering, so any kind of gradient on the edges. Now, I obviously will be working with brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. These brushes are not essential at all, but they're my favorite, so of course I'm gonna go with them. If you do wanna check them out, they will be linked in the description below, and there's always a special promo code, but again, they are not essential at all. In my case, for this basic round brush, what I'm going to pick is from the texture pack that comes with the bundle, the base round brush. So that was the first type of brush. Now we're also going to use what I call a drawing brush. So something for sketching and adding little details and outlines. That could be a brush that has the word pencil in its name if you're working with a different software. If you're working with free Procreate brushes, your drawing brush would be in the sketching pack that comes with the app, either the HB pencil or the 6B pencil. If you have my illustration bundle for the texture pack, I'm also going to be working with the sketching brush for my drawing brush. And last but not least, the third type of brush we're going to use is a generally textured brush. So if you're working in a different software, just try to find something that has the word charcoal in the name. If you're working in Procreate with free options, there is a charcoal pack that comes with the app, so probably anything from that pack could work well. I personally am a fan of the Willow Charcoal. If you do have my illustration bundle though, the brush I would recommend for your textured brush is the basic texture right here. And don't worry, you don't have to memorize the name of these brushes. I'm going to add them in the video description so you can always refer back to that description if you want to have a refresher on the tips that we just talked about. Otherwise, let's just jump straight into sketching. Great, so the sketch is going to be pretty much the exact same for everyone. We're not really going to customize the sketch just yet because we're just going to be building the basic structure, focusing on the shapes and the proportions. So we're all going to start on just one layer. So you can go ahead and create a new layer. And we are going to rename that new layer to Sketch. Now obviously here you can sketch with any color of your choice. I like to just go with a neutral gray. And you can also use any brush you're comfortable with because we're not gonna see the sketch in the final result. I recommend using the drawing brush as we talked about in the first section of the video. So a pencil brush, or if you have my bundle, the sketching brush. So we're going to start again just with very basic round shape. And this sketching face doesn't need to look good in any way, meaning it doesn't need to have clean lines and clean shapes. If you have a bunch of messy lines everywhere, that is great. But we want to work on figuring out, as I mentioned, yes, the proportions. So we're going to start with just a circle for the head, and then we're going to use that circle to help us figure out the rest of the proportions of the piece. 
So something very quick and loose like this, as you can see. And then from there, we're just going to measure the height of that circle, put it below, and then we're going to draw with the same height, some sort of a rectangle or a thick oval for the body. So you can mark just the bottom of the height. So you have a remainder and then just come in and draw your kind of hybrid, I guess, between a rectangle and an oval. It should be a little bit more narrow than the head, but it should be the same height. Oops. Great. So from there, we're going to refine the body a little bit. So adding some details for the clothes and the arms. And we're going to start by just mapping out where the torso ends and when the legs start. So that could be pretty much wherever you want in the height of this rectangle, depending on the proportions you want to give to your character. In my case, I'm going to place that line pretty much in the middle of this rectangle. And you can think of this line as the line where the belly button would be. Now my character, I'm having it just sniffing a flower or smelling a flower and just being really happy. So one hand is on her chest and the other hand is holding a flower. So we're going to draw arms that are kind of bendy or bent towards the body. And to help us place them, what we're going to do is we're going to draw some ellipses on the body first, which are going to be the shoulder sockets. And then we're going to draw two ovals per arm to have the top of the arm and the bottom of the arm. So you can place those ellipses first for the shoulder sockets, one on both sides of the body. And then you're going to use one of your halves of this rectangle as a guide for the length of each oval you're going to draw for each section of the arm. You can just measure that and then use that as a guide once more. And draw your oval there. Now once you do have your oval, which in my case I think I made it a little bit smaller or shorter. Yeah, I'll go it a bit shorter I guess. Once you do have one oval for the arm, instead of going back to measuring the body, just measure the, the oval itself for the other parts of the arms. So quite simple, quite messy as you can see. We're really just focusing on, again, the proportions. Now we might go ahead and map out a circle at the end of both arms just for the, the hands, keeping it again just very rough for now. Something like this honestly is plenty. Great. Now once we have the main body shapes outlined, we can go back and refine the head. And already I'm noticing, I feel like my head is a little bit too forward compared to the body. And that's the beauty of working with basic shapes to build your structure. It's super easy to move them around as you're creating the structure to make sure you're super happy with that structure and that composition before we actually start adding the colors, which just takes so much more time to move stuff around when you have colors. So let's say you have something that you already notice is not exactly where you want it to be. You just take a selection tool, making sure it is set to freehand or draw, depending on what is labeled in your software, so that you can draw a selection around your element. And then with an error tool or a moving tool, like this one in Procreate, you can just move your element and place it where you want it to be. So in my case, I'm just gonna make sure it's fairly aligned with the body. And you could also distort your element if you feel like maybe the head here, it's a little bit too tall compared to the width. You can just squish stuff, you can resize things. Really, that's again, the beauty of working with those basic shapes. We can quickly create a structure and make sure we're happy with that structure. That being said though, here we're going to work on the face. So the face here, you can really customize it by changing the shape of the head. I'm going with this kind of circle to start with, but what I like to do is create more of what I call a bean shape. So on one side of the head, the side where the character is facing, I add a little bit of an indent roughly in the middle in terms of the height. So it's, it looks a little bit like this. So it's kind of like you have the cheek, and then you have, I guess, the forehead. 
Now you could go with more of a rectangle if you want a more masculine or serious looking character. I like these kind of super curvy, cutesy characters. That's what I'm going to go for. Now placing the facial features is quite easy. We're going to draw what I call the plus sign, which is one slightly curved vertical line and one slightly curved horizontal line. And these lines are also going to inform us of the direction of the head. So in my case, my character is looking a little bit three quarter here. So I'm going to have my vertical line not straight in the middle, but a little bit more off to one side. And same thing with the horizontal line, maybe my character is looking up ever so slightly just because it's really happy with the smell of the flower. So instead of having just a straight line here, I might have a slightly more curved line pointing upwards. And now that we have those lines, it's really easy to place everything. The nose is usually going to be in the intersection of the plus sign, and you can have really any shape you want for your nose. I like to just have a little curve like this but you can have kind of the animal crossing triangle or an upwards curve, really so many different shapes of nose and different sizes of noses as well. So that's one option or one moment, I guess, when you can come in and customize your piece. So I'm personally just going to go with this very simple curvy shape like this. Now the eyes here, I'm going to keep them super simple. I want my character to be smelling the flower and just be so happy and peaceful, so I'm going to have these upwards curves like this, and those you're going to align them on the horizontal line. Then the mouth, in theory, obviously would be on the vertical line, but I like to have my mouth slightly off to one side, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that. Just this little curve with a tiny accentuated corner right here again just to make the character look so so happy we can also use the horizontal line to help us place the ear which is just going to be a simple oval for now and last but not least we're going to place uh, the eyebrows which are going to be above the eyes but in line with the eyes So feel free to pause the video here if you need a little bit more time to move your shapes around until you're really happy with those basic shapes in terms of the structure. Again, not the cleanliness of the line, really just the proportions and the positioning. And once you're done with that, we're going to move on to sketching the hair and then creating a slightly cleaner version of our sketch. Great, so sketching the hair is so fun. It's probably my favorite thing, honestly, because you can really add a lot of movement and character to the piece just with the hair. Now the hair is something you obviously want to customize. And I know that sometimes drawing hair is a little bit overwhelming. And the way I like to think about it is, I like to think of the hair in my cartoon characters almost as Lego hairstyles. So this kind of general shape of hair as a helmet on top of the head. So I rarely draw individual strands. I mostly just focus on one big shape and maybe I come in and add extra strands in the detailing phase. But for the sketch, I really just keep it as one mass of hair. Now I do have some specific tutorials for drawing short hair and different kind of textured hair. So wavy, uh, curly and coily and I will link those in the description below if you want to have a more in-depth explanation on how to sketch and draw those types of hair. But the general idea here is just thinking about your hair or the hair of whoever you want to draw and think of what defines it. So in my case it's long and also have some waves in it. So we're going to all start by just sketching the hair where it connects with the head and then you're just going to remember the different characteristic of your hair and you're going to adapt the general shape to make it fit your hairstyle or your type of hair. So I like to start drawing hair by just mapping out the parting line. In my case, it's a little bit off to one side, so I just draw literally this kind of line. And then I draw either the hair that is overlapping with the forehead or the hair above the head. So here I'm just gonna go with the hair overlapping with the forehead. It's a nice 
way to shape or frame the face. So in my case, again, it's slightly wavy. So I'm going to have those smooth S curves instead of straight lines. And at this stage, don't hesitate to pull out a picture of yourself in which you like your hair if you feel like you need a little bit more of a clue on how to dry your hair, but really don't agonize over it. Really just, again, focus on the main characteristic and the main shape. So here I have kind of one side, pretty simple as you can see, and I'm going to draw this kind of extra hair strand that is falling in front of the forehead. I don't really have that, but that's something I draw on most of my characters. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it here as well. Great. Now the rest of the hair, or at least the part around the head itself, you might be tempted to actually follow the shape of the head, but that looks really weird. The hair has some thickness itself, so you're going to have to be a little bit further out from the circle we use to map out the head. But otherwise, again, you're just going to remember the characteristic of your hair. So in my case, I'm not going to have a line that follows exactly the curve. I'm going to have a line that is a little bit more wobbly. Great. Now for the rest of the hairstyle, we're going to draw the hair floating away in the wind towards the right. So depending on the length of the hair, you might just have them float a little bit. Not at all. You know, they could just stop with the head. Or a lot like me. So it's really just the idea of bringing the hair essentially following this kind of curvature towards the right but then refining essentially the outline of that big hair shape depending on the hairstyle you have and the hair texture you have. So in my case, I'm just going to add once more these kind of S, S curves to add waves to the hair. And I might also add a strand that comes in front of the body just so the hair is not so much behind the character but kind of interacts with the character a little bit more. So same thing, just remembering the basic shape that informs the texture of my hair but drawing an extra strand with that. Great, so once more feel free to pause the video if you need a little bit more time to work on the hair. It shouldn't be clean, as you can see it's very very messy. We should just have a rough idea of where it's heading in the illustration. And then once you're done with that, we're going to add some clothes to our character before we move on to creating a clean sketch. So the clothes are also highly customizable. If you were to draw pants or shorts, you would just go in this bottom section here below the middle line or wherever the line was in your rectangle and you would draw a vertical line slightly off towards the right because again our character is slightly three quarters and maybe a line like this for the crotch. Super easy. In my case I'm going to draw a big white or long flowy white dress so I'm just going to amplify the sides here of that bottom section to make it look a little bit more like a skirt. Maybe adding some pleats, so just very simple vertical lines for now. I'm also going to add a bit of a ribbon to help cinch the dress, so just using that curve as the bottom of my ribbon and adding a top. Adding this kind of semicircle in the back for the knot. And then a big C shape, which is going to become essentially the big loop at the back. I might actually come in and also add an extra ribbon floating in the wind. So thinking maybe the ribbon would start a little bit in the back here. But then it would come in the front and create this kind of swoosh.
Yeah, something like that. At the top of the dress, I'm going to have it just be a very simple collar, so just a U shape right here. And two short sleeves, so very basic curves on top of the arms. And yes, this is a case of trusting the process. At this stage, it looks absolutely crazy, but it is, again, just such a good idea to sketch everything quickly first using basic shapes and forms and working on your structure and your composition before starting to add the colors. It's just a much more efficient workflow for creating illustrations. So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to move your different elements, different limbs, different shapes around, again, just using the selection tool to draw a section and then the arrow tool to move stuff around. And then once you're happy with that, we're going to move on to the next chapter, which is going to be cleaning up our sketch a little bit before we move on to the colors. Great. So once you're happy with your rough sketch, we're going to quickly clean it up before we move on to the coloring phase. This is definitely optional, but especially if you're more of a beginner or intermediate, I really recommend cleaning up the sketch just to have a better idea of what we're about to do when we add the colors. Now, there are so many different ways to do this. One way I really like is just starting with a lowered opacity sketch. So just tapping on a little N next to the check mark, if you're working in Procreate at least, and lowering the opacity slider here until you can just barely see your sketch. In my case here in the video, I'm going to keep it a little bit more opaque so you can see it in the video. But in your case, just lower the opacity as much as you can before the sketch completely disappears. And from there, what you're going to do is you're just going to create a new layer on top of the sketch. And you're going to rename that new layer to Clean Sketch. And either with the same color or a slightly darker version of it, so I'm just going to go with a darker gray. We're going to go over and find which lines we want to use. So for example, if I go here with, uh, I don't know, the, the head, I have a bunch of different little lines. So I'm just going to go over and say, okay, out of the four lines that I have here, which one am I actually going to go for? And then trace over that. So this is something that is obviously going to depend on your lines and your illustrations. I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on finding your lines and cleaning up your sketch. I'm going to just speed up through my process of doing it so you have an idea of what it looks like. And then you can just pause the video. And once you're done with your cleaner sketch, we're going to meet up in the next chapter, which is going to be adding the color. And that's going to be significantly easier because at this point, it's just like we're working with a coloring book. Great, so at this stage we're going to start adding the colors and we're just going to color block them really quickly. So we're not going to go any texture, any details, any shadings just yet, just flat colors. Now for that, if you want, you could go ahead and keep your original sketch layer, but I think we don't really need it anymore at this stage, so we can just hide it for now. Maybe not delete it just in case, but at least hide it. And that should also show you if you are missing anything, like we're missing the hand, but that's normal. That being said, I am missing this kind of little cheek area, so I'm going to come back in and quickly add this. There we go. <laughs> and yeah, we're just going to color block the different elements. Now there are, again, many ways to do that. I like to just create multiple layers to separate the different colors so that they are easy to change as we create the illustrations. You could create everything on one layer if you want to, but I don't recommend it because when we start adding the colors or the textures, I should say, and the details, we're going to use some features that require to have everything on separate layers. So starting with really whatever you want here, I'm going to start with, let's go with the character. So we're just going to create all our layers above any background color we might have, but below the clean sketch layer. And we're going to make sure that we rename the layers to what they actually are in the piece because we're going to end up with a bunch of layers. So all of that to say, let's go with an example. Let's say I draw the skin. I'm just going to create a new layer and I'm going to rename that new layer to 
skin. Now, if you want to follow along with exactly what I'm doing, although it is a cartoon yourself, you can do that, obviously. I have the color palette I will be using right here. It is completely free. You can go ahead and download it. It is linked in the description below. So feel free to go ahead and pause the video if you want to get that. Otherwise, I do have a trick if you want to work from a picture of yourself. So the goal here would just be finding a picture of yourself in which you like the colors. So not really necessarily your face or your hair as much as really just the colors of them. And then you're just going to import that in your software. So if you're working in Procreate, that would mean going in the wrench icon menu here, in the add some menu, picking insert a photo, which is going to open up your camera roll and then you can just tap on the photo itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now I don't have a lot of pictures of myself on the iPad, so I'm just gonna go with this one to give you an example. But the idea would be taking that picture making it quite small, putting it kind of out of the way in the corner. And then you can use that to color pick the different elements. But as you can see, if I'm color picking here just on the skin, I get so many different variations of a skin color. So one trick that you can use here to just make your color picking easier is add some blur to the picture. So in Procreate, you can do that by making sure you have your picture layer selected. Going in the adjustment panel here, picking Gaussian Blur towards the middle of the menu. So right here, and you can swipe your finger towards the right to add some blur and towards the left to reduce the blur. So you want to have something not too blurry that all the colors are the same, but blurry enough that, for example, all the skin looks almost like the same thing. And then once you've done that, it's really much easier if you go around and color pick. The color variation is still going to be there, but not nearly as strong as before we added the blur. So you could just go ahead and create your color palette that way. Just color picking all over the place, the skin, the hair, and so forth. Again, in my case though, I'm going to use the color palette right here, so it's going to be even easier. I'm going to give you tips on picking the colors as we go if you're doing the same thing as I am doing. So for the skin, I will be using this one right here on the top left. Going back on my skin layer, all we're going to do here is we're going to pick our basic round brush, so just the round brush, whatever that was in your case, in your software, in my case here, the base round brush. And we are going to outline the shape that we want to fill in with that color, and then we're going to fill it in. So it's really just color blocking, like we're creating silhouettes of the different elements using colors. Now, if like me, you have a pretty dark sketch right now, it might be a little bit hard to see exactly where you're placing your colors. So you could go ahead and lower the opacity of your clean sketch as well, just so you have a better idea of what you're doing. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly here over this coloring section, or at least the color blocking part of the section, because it's really just outlining the different shapes and then filling them in. So I'm going to speed up my video when I'm outlining the shapes, feel free to pause when needed, and then I'm going to show you or come back to talk whenever I change a color. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider helping the channel by giving this video a like and subscribing if you haven't already. Now, I know everyone on YouTube is asking me to do that, but believe it or not, it does help us and our channels a lot because it just tells YouTube to take the video and show it to more people. So thanks for helping. Now for the arms, we're also going to need to draw the hands. Here, I'm going to keep them super, super simple. I'm going to start with the one that is going to be the palm on the heart, so open hand. You can just start by maybe outlining the arm first. And then the hand itself is going to be three fingers and one thumb. So the thumb is just going to be pointing upwards and it's going to be this kind of sausage shape. And the other fingers are also going to be sausage shapes, just longer and pointing towards the right of the illustration. So it's always a good idea to just sketch them out really quickly, then fill in the shape and adjust as needed. I feel that's actually not too bad for a first sketch. I'm just gonna come in with a round eraser, so whatever brush you're using for your painting, just set your eraser to that same brush. 
And I might refine my shape here. I think the thumb starts too low and it's too thick, so I'm just going to make it a little bit slimmer. <laughs> Same thing with this finger, it's a little bit too chubby. <laughs> Let's go with that. And really just refining the shape a little bit, but keeping the very basic structure that we just used or that we just created by using sausage shapes. Now the other hand is a, essentially just a fist holding the flower, so it's super simple. All we're going to do is we're going to have kind of a, a rectangle to start with, kind of this rounded rectangle, but then we're going to add some bumps for the knuckles. So three bumps. And then a little bit of a thumb poking it at the top. That's it. So we're really just going to repeat this with all the other shapes we have, although right now when I zoomed out I realized this hand is a little bit too small, so it's not too late. I'm just going to use my section tool and arrow tool to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. So yes, we're just going to repeat these steps on the different layers that we have to create the different color blockings that we need to create. So next I'm going to move on to the hair. I'm gonna put the hair probably below the skin. And in the color palette V color, I'm going to use as the base hair color is this brown right here. It is the fourth column at the top. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave me a comment in the description below describing your character to me. So in my case, I would say it's a character with long brown hair wearing a white dress. Now I feel a little bit confused with what is the secret password thing. It's a game that we play here on the channel and all the long form illustration tutorials I hide either a question or a one word for you to find. The secret password does something super important, which is it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and paste my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you. So once more, if you've watched this far, just pause the video here, take a few seconds to let me know in the comments below what your character looks like, and then we're going to keep going. And from there I'm going to move on to the clothes, which in my case is just a very simple white dress, but I'm not going to be able to see the white dress because my background is white, so I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate my background for now, which might make my sketch a little bit harder to see so I could bring the opacity back up a little bit for now as well. Yeah, that should work. Otherwise, I'm going to create again a new layer, probably between the skin and the hair this time. And I'm going to use a bit of a cream, so not a pure white in the color palette. It is this one right here, third column on the top. Then I also have the ribbon around the waist and then flying in front of my character. So I'm going to create a new layer below the skin but above the dress. And I'm going to go with a nice dark green which in the color palette is this one right here, fifth column on the top.
And that's pretty much it for the basic color blocking for my character. But I do want to have a background, of course. I'm going to come in and color block three different grass sections and then the sky. Starting probably with the sky because that can be the background layer. So I could go ahead and reactivate my background right here. Just select the background layer. If you don't have a, if you're not working with Procreate, you're not going to have that background layer. So you just need to create a new layer, put it below everything you have and just fill in the layer. And I'm going to fill in with a nice sky blue. So in the color palette, it is this one right here on the very top right. And from there, I'm just going to create the three hills. So just creating a new layer below everything except the background. And I'm going to rename that to just hill one, I guess. And here I'm just going to draw this very soft U shape pretty much around the shoulders and the neck of the character is going to be the lower point. And for that I'm going to use a darker kind of green or medium kind of green, which in the color palette is right here, right next to the bright yellow. Then one more layer below hill one. This one we can just rename it to hill two. And we're going to go with a lighter, less saturated green. So right next to the one we just used, this one in the color palette. This time I'm going to go with a slight curve again, but instead of being a hue, it's going to go upwards a little bit. So starting lower on the left and then higher on the right. And then last but not least, we're going to have Hill 3, which is going to be paler and less saturated, so not as vibrant. I'm going to create that new layer below the other two, of course, and renaming it to Hill 3. And in the color palette, again, just right next to the one we just used, this one right here. And this time I'm going to do pretty much the exact opposite of Hill 2, so starting higher on the left and going lower on the right. That being said, at this stage, I'm going to need to hide this picture and I don't even really need it. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. In your case, you could just hide it if you need it. And we're just going to create that nice soft hill in the back. Now at this stage, once we have the background, we may want to move the character. I feel like mine is a little bit too small and a little bit too low and on the left. So all you have to do for that is go ahead and select all your layers that apply to the character. So the different color blocking and the sketches. And to select multiple layers in Procreate, super easy. You can just swipe them towards the right with one finger. And then from there you can use your error tool or your moving resizing tool, depending on the software you're using. But you probably want to set it to uniform to make sure you do not distort your character at this stage. So I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger, quite a bit bigger actually, and set it in the middle. So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to finish mapping out or color blocking the main sections of your piece. And then once you're done with that, we're going to move on to the next chapter, which is going to be adding some color variation and gradients. Great, so now that we have our basic shapes, we're going to come back in and just quickly add a few gradients to start bringing some of the elements to life a little bit more. Now if you do have a gradient tool in your software, you could just use your gradient tool to create the gradients. But here I'm going to go with the textured brush that we talked about in the first section of this video, so that those gradients do have a bit of texture as well. And here we're going to start with the gradients on the hills because they're really big shapes and it's going to help break them up a little bit. So we're going to start probably with hill one. We're just going to add a darker 
border, I guess, on the bottom. So you can just select your hill one layer. We're going to select a darker version of the green we use for the hills, which is going to be this one right here. And we are going to pick our textured brush. So that was a charcoal brush, or if you have my illustration bundle in the texture pack, the basic texture brush. And here you're going to set probably your brush to a medium to big size. Honestly, that the exact size doesn't matter. You've probably heard me say that so many times in all my videos. But the idea is really just to be able to darken, especially the bottom corners, as well as a little bit of the middle bottom. Now one trick here, if you feel like you're struggling to have a smooth transition, you can always just come back and color pick the color that was the lighter one and just create your gradient by coming back with that lighter color on top of the dark one and just try to smooth that transition. Great, so I'll go with just something like this for now. We're going to add some flowers and some grass later as well, which is going to help, I guess, blend that gradient a little bit more or hide the patchiness of that potential gradient. But before, before that, we're going to keep adding some gradients and I'm going to add one more on this hill one, which is going to be a lighter section at the top. Now creating the gradient at the bottom was easy because we're not really going to spill out of the shape, but creating a gradient at the top of a shape is harder. So one tip that you can use is called alpha lock and alpha lock is available in most software the way to find it in procreate actually there's two ways way number one is just taking two fingers and swiping your layer towards the right and that's going to make this kind of checkered pattern appear behind your preview or you could also just tap on your layer and activate alpha lock right here from the layer menu now alpha lock all it does essentially is now whatever we draw on this layer is going to stay within the pixels so the shape that was already there which means if we want to add a gradient on the top we're not going to have to worry about staying within the lines if you do not have alpha lock in your software don't worry about it you can just be a little bit more precise or be very very loose and then come back and erase anything that's spelling out so here i'm just going to go with a slightly lighter version of the green we use for this grass so in the color palette it is right here in the middle of this green column Great, so we're going to repeat this with the other hills as well. So we're going to activate the alpha lock option on both other hills, just swiping the layer towards the right with two fingers. And then I'm going to move on to hill two. But on hill two, instead of just having a gradient, I'm going to come in and draw some slightly curved lines to make it look more like a field with crops. I'm still going to use a slightly lighter version of the base color, which in the color palette is right here. So I same brush, but probably small to medium size this time. So very quick, very loose, maybe coming back in with the original color, so I can color pick that and creating a gradient at the bottom so the lines kind of disappear when they get closer to the bottom of the hill. And we're also going to add, again, just a bit of a highlight on the top of the last hill. This one I'm going to keep it super simple, so just going on hill 3 and picking in the color palette the lighter version of that basic color we used right here and just brushing a soft gradient on the top. Oh, it seems like I didn't activate alpha lock. There we go. Ah, that's much better. Great, now we're also going to add some gradients on the character, but before that we might go ahead and add a little bit in the sky as well, just making the bottom part of the sky lighter. 
Now we cannot draw on the background color layer that comes within Procreate. We can just set that to one solid color. So you can just go ahead, create a new layer, put it below everything you have so far and rename that to sky gradient or something like that. And here, same technique. We're just going to pick a lighter version of our blue. So in the color palette, it is right here. And we're going to brush that lighter color towards the bottom, mostly around the character. That's going to help the character pop from the background. Great, so adding gradients on the character is obviously optional and it depends on a few different factors. I like to add gradients on the hair because my hair is usually really long and sometimes on the clothes. Now I'm not gonna add any on the clothes today, but I'm also going to show you how to add a bit of color variation on the skin. So all that to say, we're going to move on to the hair next, but then I'm going to give you tips for the skin and that can really help transform the piece and make your character look more alive rather than just super flat. So let's go with the hair first though, because it's going to be the same technique we use for the background. So we're just going to activate alpha lock on the hair layer. And what I like to do for the hair, this is something you can customize of course, is I just like to go with a darker color at the top and then a lighter, more orangey color at the bottom. You could completely change the color of the hair as well from top to bottom. You could have maybe some, I don't know, like pink peekaboos at the bottom. Really, there's so much you can do here very quickly and very easily to customize the piece. Again, in my case though, I'm just gonna go with dark at the top around the roots and light at the bottom. So this was the column I use, or that was at least a column with the original brown for the hair here at the top. The lighter color is going to be here and the darker color is going to be here. So I'm just gonna start with the darker one around the roots once more. And then the lighter one towards the ends. So super quick, super simple, but already a big difference. Now, like I mentioned, you could go ahead and create a gradients in your clothing elements as well. I'm not going to, so I'm going to skip the dress and the ribbon, and I'm going to go straight to the skin. So activating alpha lock once more. And then I'm going to pick a pink that I can use for cheeks and elements like that. So in the color palette, it is right here. You would have to adapt it to your skin color, of course, if you were using your picture. You could maybe try and find a pinker area on your skin or just manually make it more pink because it's a cartoon after all. Now for that though, we're going to need to reactivate our sketch because we want to see where the facial features are. So we can just go ahead and reactivate the clean sketch layer here. And we are going to use, or at least I am going to use, that pink on top of the ears, the cheeks, the nose, and probably, uh, what are they called? The elbows. <laughs> there we go. So probably the elbows as well, maybe the tip of the fingers. So very simple. It's really just the same technique, gently brushing in that color, but on more focused areas rather than just creating a gradient. Now the nose is a tricky one though because you definitely don't want to overdo it. You don't want to have just like a pink nose. Well, you could, that, that's a style, but that's not my favorite thing at least. So I really want to keep the nose fairly subtle, but maybe the cheeks can be a little bit more intense. I'm also going to do, as I mentioned, the elbows. And let's go with the tip of the fingers too, why not? Probably keeping them a little bit more subtle though. And from there, I'm just going to hide my sketch once more and check everything, maybe coming back to my original skin color and blending those cheeks a little bit more. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. Just like that. 
So once more, feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to add extra color variation and gradients. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next chapter, which is going to be adding some shadows. Awesome, so we're gonna keep the shading here super simple. We're mostly going to use it to help separate the different elements. For example, here the head just looks like it's the same as the neck. So we're going to add shadows whenever we have those kind of overlaps between elements to help separate them, but not so much to actually create a really realistic uh, shading and lighting scenario. Here I'm really going for something super simple, soft, children's book style, painterly style, really quite soft. So we're going to use the same technique we used for the gradients, meaning activating alpha lock, or if you don't have alpha lock, just being a bit more precise in your lines. But we're going to come in with darker versions of the different colors, and we're also going to use a more precise brush, so a smaller brush, to target specific areas rather than just huge sections. So here for the shadows, I'm actually going to start with the characters, because that's where most of the shadows are going to be. In my case, I'm going to imagine that the light source is kind of a sun roughly here on the top, probably a little bit more right than just the middle. So roughly around here, meaning most of my shadows are going to be on the bottom left of the character. Don't worry though, I'm going to give you tips on placing those shadows, but you could easily customize your shading by just moving the light source and maybe adding shadows on a different side. So here again, I'm going to start with the skin. And the color we're going to use for the shadows here on the skin is going to be this one right here in the color palette. We're going to keep our textured brush, a charcoal or basic texture brush, but we're going to make it, as I mentioned, slightly smaller. The exact size doesn't matter again, but we want to be able to come in and, for example, separate the head from the neck without it just being a big blurry line. So that's exactly what we're going to start with. We're just going to draw this rough line here, and then we're going to create a gradient on the neck. So from the top towards the bottom. Now we're also going to have a shadow, at least if you do have a hair strand like me, we're going to have a shadow that is cast from that hair strand onto the neck. So you can just mimic the shape of that hair strand and draw that as a shadow on the neck itself. It should be pretty crisp, so you don't want a soft gradient like this. You really just want essentially the silhouette of the hair strand, but further down and on the neck. Oh, I might have made mine a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna color pick my original skin color and tweak it really quickly. Then coming back to my shadow color, we're going to keep adding some very simple shadows. The next ones we're going to add are going to be on top of the head. Mostly, if you're like me, you have also a hair strand that is just in front of the forehead. We're going to do the same thing we did here, but here instead. So just redrawing that basic shape, but a little bit more on the left, like the hair strand is casting a shadow on the forehead. I don't know why I keep making them too big. <laughs> and then we can maybe soften that edge a little bit, so creating a gradient from that corner, just so it's not too harsh. And maybe adding a very, very soft shadow on this top section, like maybe this part of the hair would be slightly shading the top of the forehead. It is not realistic in any way, but in terms of cartoon, <laughs> that could work. Yeah, I, I like that. Now, believe it or not, that's pretty much it for the shading on the head. We're going to very quickly shade the arms as well, mostly to separate the forearm from top of the arm. So we're going to do that by just either reactivating your sketch if you need to, or just free eyeballing it, I guess. So just adding a very simple line like this on both arms. And we could also add a bit of a shadow here under the sleeve. So just something soft again. 
on the other sleeve as well. Very simple as you can see, but there's already so much more going on with the character. So next we're going to move on to the hair, which is going to be even more simple. We're mostly going to shade the part of the hair that is behind the character and maybe adding some shadows to separate big hair strands like the one here on the forehead and the one over the shoulder. So going back on the hair layer, this time we're just going to come back and pick the darker color that we used for the roots. So in my case, it was this one right here in the color palette. And we're just really going to darken the area behind the head or behind the face and yeah behind the character so in my case i have a little bit here that i can come back in and shade that was a bit too harsh i'm going to make it a little bit softer there we go probably doing it on the other side as well but on the other side i'm going to start by just defining this strand right here. So same thing we did for the arm, just creating a small line first. And then from that line, creating a gradient. Same thing for the strand on the top. Although this one is kind of really going to be in the light, so we're mostly just going to draw a bit of a line. We're not necessarily going to create a gradient from it. Maybe just the smallest little gradient here, but mostly just focusing on that line. At least in my case, you might have something different, of course. I might also separate this section of the hair. Let's see. Yeah, I'll just go with a very small gradient here below this kind of... I, I don't even know what it's called, but... Yeah, this big C curve that comes back and around the head. Great, so next we're going to move on to the clothes. We're also going to keep it super simple for the clothes, mostly separating the arms and maybe adding some folds on the dress, or if you have you know, a dress at all. So we're going to activate alpha lock on the dress layer or the clothes layer. And we're going to pick once more just a slightly darker version of the base color. So in my case, it is right here in the color palette. And I'm going to start by just, yes, separating the body from this arm right here. So adding a small line and then creating a gradient. Same thing on this side, although I'm going to keep it really, really subtle on that side. Just like that. I'm also going to make sure that my shadow here that is cast by the hair strand is also cast on the shirt or the dress as needed. So just extending it a little bit, both on the back and front right here. Very, very simple. And I'm also going to add a bit of a shadow, same thing, just kind of extend the one from the head that is on the neck. I'm going to extend that on the dress maybe add a bit of a shadow under this arm and hand. Now in my mind the hand is really resting on the body so I don't want that shadow to be too far away. I really want to just maybe add a bit of gradient around you know that body part in general. Now we're also going to add some folds on your skirt if you do have some sort of a dress or skirt and those are going to be super simple. You can reactivate your sketch if you want and follow them from there or you can just eyeball them. I'm going to add long ones on the side and shorter ones in the middle.
I'm also going to add some very simple shadows on a ribbon, and then last but not least, we're going to add some shadows around a character on the grass, and then we're just going to move on to the details to polish up the piece. So we're almost done, it's the home stretch, but all the things we do from now on are going to completely transform everything. So let's do the shadows on the ribbon first, same thing, just activating alpha lock on the ribbon and picking a darker version of the base color, which in the color palette is uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, this one right here, I think. And we're really just very easily going to shade mostly the back of the ribbon. We're not going to shade so much the front, although we might come back in and add some lights, but really just this area here to separate the ribbon from the loop or I can't remember what it's called. I have a, I'm blanking on it this morning, but this section right here. Then maybe shading where this extra ribbon starts at the back of the dress, creating a gradient there. And maybe creating a gradient on this bottom section. So they kind of swoop, shading that bottom to help it pop from the grass. Again, maybe adding a bit of light in the front. So in the color palette, it is right here, right between the original color and the shadow color. Focusing on the right side, but not going right to the very edge, just focusing it a little bit on the middle right, I guess. And last but not least, we're going to add, as I mentioned, a bit of a shadow around the character, but on the grass, so you can go back on your hill one layer. And you can either color pick the darker section of that layer, or you can just go back in the color palette. It was this color right here. And we're just going to gently brush an oval around the character first, around the base of the character, I should say. And I say oval, but it's almost just a horizontal line at this point. It's just a little bit thicker in the middle. If you have long hair, don't forget to extend it a little bit further on the side of the hair. And similarly to what we did for the hair strands, we're also going to add a very soft shadow on the grass that would be from that ribbon. So just using the same shape as a ribbon, but adding on the grass. All right, so once more, feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to work on your shading. And then once you're done with that, we're going to move on to the final chapter, which is adding the details. Awesome, so at this stage we're really almost done, but all we do here is going to completely transform everything, as I mentioned. So we're going to start with the facial features, because this is probably the main thing we're missing right now. now. You could go ahead and draw those facial features right on the skin layer, but because they're so important and we may want to move them around, I like to just draw them on the separate layer, so you can create a new layer above the skin. And rename that new layer to Facial Features. For that, we're going to go back to, or for the details at least, we're going to go back to our drawing brush. So in my case, that was the sketching brush, but in your case, it might be more of a pencil brush. And really, there's no magic trick here. We're just going to reactivate our clean sketch. We're going to pick a few different colors, and we're just going to go over these lines that we don't have in our illustration yet, but that we had in our sketch. So I'm going to start with the eyes, because I really cannot wait to see this character with eyes. It's going to be hard to see it in the video, I bet, but the eye color I'm going to use is a dark brown at the very bottom left corner of this color palette. I'm going to use the same one for the mouth. Or the same color for the mouth, but maybe a smaller brush. I don't know. It's all about experimenting as we go, of course. And then for this little shape in the ear and the nose, I'm just going to come in with the color I use for the shadows. I'm just going to color pick that here. I know that's the color. I'm going to use that on the details for the face. Now once you've mapped those out though, it might be a good idea to hide your clean sketch and make sure that your facial features still look good because 
we did change a few things since doing the clean sketch. We changed, you know, when we were doing the basic shapes, color blocking, and we changed while we were doing some shading and stuff like that. So chances are here you're going to have to tweak your facial features based on how they were in the sketch. So in my case, I feel like this eye is a little bit too big. So I'm just going to select it. And then maybe using distort, I'm going to bring this corner in a little bit. No, I'm just going to use uniform and make the whole thing smaller. There we go. <laughs> so really, it is worth here taking the time to maybe redraw some elements. I'm going to maybe thicken the top of the nose here. Maybe thicken this shape as well here on the ear. It is really, really worth pausing the video if you need time here to work on your facial features because they are so, so, so important. I'm going to actually also lower them all. They're kind of weirdly positioned right now. Yeah, that's much better. And once you are happy with the facial features, we're going to go back on the skin layer. And with our shadow color, we're going to define the fingers a little bit. Now, don't be scared. It's significantly easier than it seems. All we're going to do is we're going to start with a hand that is open. And we're going to draw the top of each finger. So just bringing those lines in a little bit. So that's it for this hand. As you can see, nothing complicated. This one is even easier. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to follow the top of the fingers, but this time it's going to be kind of knuckles, so the lines are going to be a bit shorter. It's going to look like this. Once more, that's it. <laughs> Now once we have that, we're also going to add some little highlights on the skin just to make it pop. Now I like to add highlights on the cheeks, the ears, and some other kind of round areas, but you could place your highlights wherever you want, of course. The color I'm going to use for that is this one right here in the color palette. We'll see if it's actually bright enough. I might have to tweak it. Let me try real quick on the nose. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. So I'm just going to add a bit of a highlight on top of the nose like this. I'm also going to add some dots on the cheeks, so three that are going to be slightly different sizes, one big one, one medium, and one small. I might highlight the side of the face here just to make it pop from the hair. Maybe the top of the hair as well. Maybe the top of the forearms. Really, there's no right or wrong way to do this here. I'm just kind of looking at pieces that are still a little bit too flat and then I'm adding a bit of a highlight on them. Nothing more fancy than this. So maybe the top of the hand. And I might add a dot on each elbow as well. Great. Now we're also going to add these kind of details and highlights on the hair. So you can just go back on your hair layer and just pick a lighter version of the hair. In my case, I'm going to pick the same color I used here for the bottom of the hair, that light orange right here. And I'm just going to add some very simple hair strands that follow the general shape that I use for my hair. So in my case here, I have again, wavy hair, so I use kind of loose S curves. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here, but with highlights to add, yeah, that hair texture, but also just some lights in the hair. So mostly focusing these lights on the top right, because again, that's where I have my light source, my sun. But in your case, it could be completely different.
So again, super simple. We're not taking too long on these details, but they really help bring the piece together. And especially refining the character is going to help that character pop from the background. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some details on the clothes. Those are going to depend obviously on what kind of clothes you're drawing. Here I'm going with a super simple dress. So I'm just going to add some little like lace details on the sleeves. But in your case, you could have a pattern on your clothes. You could have uh, like a print, really anything here. You could go ahead and change the piece even more, make it your own even more. Now, one thing though is my dress layer is below the skin layer. So if I wanted to add those lace details on the dress layer, they're not gonna show up. So I'm just going to create a new layer above my skin layer and I'm going to rename that new layer to dress details. From there though, I'm just gonna color pick the base color I use for my dress and add these little U shapes, smaller brush, but add these little U shapes to create the lace details. Now one other really important thing we're missing is the flower in our character's hand. So we're gonna go ahead and draw that now. This is another layer they're gonna to have to create above the skin and probably above everything else just to make sure the flower is in fact in front of everything. So just create a new layer and rename it to flower. So for the stem, we're just going to pick essentially the same color that we use for our grass. So I'm gonna pick this one right here. And we're going to draw a stem that pokes out from the top of the hand, of course, going over the face a little bit. And maybe pokes out a tiny bit, kind of in a curvy way, at the bottom of the hand. We might also add a bit of a leaf on the top of the hand, just to help the hand separate from the face. But again, super, super simple. If you want to refine that leaf shape a little bit, you could come back, color pick the shadow color you use on the grass and maybe shade the bottom of the leaf a bit. I don't know, kind of going off script here. Maybe add a bit of a, a line in the middle for the vein on the leaf. That just might help make it look a little bit less flat. But again, you could just keep it super simple. It's pretty small in the piece, so it doesn't really matter that much. Now the type of flower you draw is obviously completely optional. Here I'm just gonna go with some sort of a very cartoonish daisy and I'm going to use the color I used for the dress to tie it in. So I'm just gonna color pick that. And I'm going to draw five petals. So one, two, three, four, five. That might be a bit too small. Let's go bigger, let's go bold. <laughs> let's go with that, yeah. And I'm going to make it a really bright yellow center. Of course, that's what is in a daisy. So it's going to be this yellow right here in the very middle, well, almost middle of the palette. Just drawing a very loose oval in the middle of my petals. Now the last few things we're going to do are also going to completely transform the piece, but they're probably the easiest thing we're going to draw in the whole piece. We're going to draw some grass around the base of the dress to help it blend in the field. And then we're just going to draw some dots that are going to be flowers. So we're going to start with the grass at the bottom of the dress. So you can just go ahead and create a new layer. In my case, I'm going to create it between the ribbon and the dress so the ribbon is actually floating above the grass. We're going to rename that layer to grass. And we're just going to pick roughly the green that is around a character, but that is not the shadow. So you can just color pick in that area. In my case, I'm going to go with this. It should be pretty much this one in the color palette, the one at the top of the list. And then we're going to draw some blades of grass. Now, in my case, again, I have wind going on. So I want my blades of grass to be following the wind. You know, they're gonna be bendy in the wind. So they're all going to be slightly curved towards the right. And they're all going to be slightly different heights as well.
Now one thing though, make sure you completely cover the base of the dress. You don't want to have a harsh line. So you should have blades of grass everywhere on the bottom. Now to tie in the piece a little bit, we're also going to add some of those blades of grass around the rest of the hill because otherwise it's going to look really weird if the rest is flat. So just groups of one, two, or three here and there. You don't want to overdo it, but it's going to really just help make it make sense a little bit more. Now if like me you feel like you cannot see them super well, you can just color pick the area at the top that is a little bit lighter and go with that instead. And last but not least, we're going to add the flowers. Now, you could go ahead and draw them on the grass layer, but I'm just going to create another layer just to keep everything well labeled. So just a new layer. Um, maybe putting it above the ribbon here because I might have a flower in front of the ribbon. And then renaming that new layer to flowers. Flower colors here obviously is completely customizable. I'm going to go with the same kind of cream and yellow that I used on the daisy here. So I'm going to start with a cream and we're just going to draw some little blobs that are going to be bigger in the front and smaller in the back, of course, to create that illusion of depth. And make sure here you have some that actually go out of the frame. If you keep them all, you know, perfectly full and not cut, it's going to look weird. So some flowers, if you were to take a picture, would be cut by the frame. So you want to make sure that you include those in the illustration as well. And I'm going to finish it up once more by just using my bright yellow here to add some of the same kind of flowers, but just a different color. And there you go. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial and want more cartoon you sell videos, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I post every Saturday with some bonus videos on Tuesdays. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.